Hello, I'm Lou Alan Falco, the creator of Approval Test. In this episode, we're going to talk about the theory behind reporters. As I mentioned in the previous episode on introducing reporters, reporters are something that are fairly unique to approval tests, and you don't really see them in any other framework. If you haven't already watched the introduction episode, I highly suggest you watch that first, as it will make a lot of this stuff make a lot more sense and give it some context. So first of all, I've mentioned before that there are four things that unit tests give you. Specification, feedback, regression, granularity. And all of these are important, although which ones are important to you can sometimes be a question of personal taste or the area that you're working in. However, reporters are really about the second and fourth option here, feedback and granularity. And for starters, it's because it's only at these two places, when you're running the test before you've gotten it to pass, and when you've run the test after it passes, but it's now breaking, that the reporters will launch at all, because the reporters only launch on failure. Let's look into here. There's sort of two parts of a test. There's a do and there's a verify. And if you verify and everything works, then you just want to end, like test pass. And to give an example of this, if you go to your car mechanic and he says, the engine works, the wheels work, the oil's fine, the window's fine, but you have a problem with your steering wheel. You don't ask about the engine, you don't ask about the doors. You want to know about the steering wheel. Because stuff that works, you don't need more detail on. However, you do want to get more detail about that steering wheel. And it's the same with a regular test. When the verification fails, you want more information to help you understand that failure. And this is usually done in other frameworks, but at a very minimal level. They will give you some sort of character diffing sometimes if two words don't match. If two primitives don't match, like a, it'll, they'll tell you five and three. And if you have an extra comment, they'll put that in. But that's usually the extent of which they will go. Reporters are going to go farther. And I should mention that sometimes this increased feedback can be slow, which is another reason you don't want to do it during a successful test. Now, we're going to take this concept to a much bigger level many episodes later when we start talking about non-deterministic testing. But for now, let's talk about what that reporter can do when it fails. So the first thing it can do is it can render the result. Sometimes the result that you got is not meaningful in the way that it is given to you. And you'll need some other tool. The most obvious version of this, of course, would be if you had like a bitmap file, right? Nobody wants to see the ones and zeros, but if you bring it in an image render, that might be useful to you. The next thing is it can increase the granularity. And we'll see that where it's not just, and maybe it doesn't even render it to increase the granularity. Maybe you're using other things. The diff tools do this a lot. Sometimes they'll render, sometimes they don't. And then the third thing a reporter can do for you is it can help you to actually approve the result. We'll see that also in the diff reporters. We'll also see that in the clipboard reporter. And so I'm going to go and take you through a couple quick demos on all this. Now the demo I'm going to use is going to use something we're not going to talk about for a while from the testing point of view, which is an MVC application. But that's not really the point here. The point is to look at how the reporter affects the entire experience. So over here, I have a new test. And let's start by writing that. So MVC approvals .verify an MVC page. And I'm going to whip up a new cool controller. And we're going to test, oops, didn't construct it there. We're going to test the name. Great. We're currently using a diff reporter. Let's give this a run. So as you remember, we're now in the feedback part. We've never gotten this test to successfully run. And it's giving us a lot of HTML stuff. And while this is all accurate and good, I don't have the faintest idea what this does. And so it's not helping me in the feedback. So I'm going to switch how I get this to a file launch reporter. Because what I care about right now is how it renders. Great. So now you can see this is how it renders. And if this matches with your artistic style, which is questionable, 
But if this is what you want, I can now see that it's doing this and I can now go to approve it. Of course, there's no mechanism to approve it here. So I'm gonna use the clipboard reporter. Now the clipboard reporter is not telling me anything of use, but since I've already known it's okay, I can now easily click the command into my command prompt and I can see that it now passes. Great. So now I'm gonna pause the video and change something. All right, I've unpaused the video. I'm gonna run this again so it fails and I'm gonna bring us back to the file launcher reporter. So here's the failure at the feedback point. I can see how it looks and it still looks just fine to me but I can't figure out what changed. And that's because right now I wanna increase my granularity but I'm using something that increases my understanding of the final result. So I'm gonna switch back to the diff reporter. When I give this a run, I can see now very clearly that on line 18 of the HTML, what used to be a lowercase y is now an uppercase y. Very easy because I've used a reporter that's highlighting granularity differences. So I'm gonna change that back. And finally, I wanna point out that granularity doesn't always happen from the reporter. There's many ways you get granularity. The scoping of your test is an important piece of that, but another important piece is the frequency of your test. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn on InCrunch. And you can see by these green dots that this is working because of InCrunch. If I go here and change to go to the index, InCrunch will detect that I've changed my file and it will rerun the file to show me the result. And here you can see the red X's are telling me even though no reporter was launched because InCrunch reporter does nothing so it doesn't disturb your flow, the red dots are telling me that something went wrong and the granularity is because all I have changed is this one call. If I change it back, I can now see the green dots. And so I'm getting granularity through the frequency of running my test. And within Crunch, that frequency is somewhere in the neighborhood of about every two seconds. So hopefully this has helped you to see sort of all the different places that uh, reporters can be used. The way that they can really increase your feedback and increase your understanding of what is going on at the two most complicated times in a piece of a test before you've ever seen anything and when stuff is going wrong. Both of these times you want a little extra help and that's what the reporters are here to do. I wanna close by highlighting the Hunter team. This is actually the entire software team at Hunter came and said, I know there's stuff you wanna do in, with approval tests. How about you come down and pair with us for a day? And so Woody, Dexter, Gordon, and Chris all came. We did a mod program for a day and we added a lot of the stuff that you're seeing here in the rep reporters. The NCrunch reporter came out of this, the way they collapse. A lot of stuff that you're seeing in the next episode was actually done on the .NET side by the Hunter team. As always, if you have any questions with approval tests, tweet it with the hashtag approval test. I monitor that frequently and we'll answer you promptly.